the Great Bridge of Murden is in sight. Beyond it, the Empire. What do you know? There aren't bridges that big in Elmira, that's for sure. How unsettling. There are bridges in the southern part of Rodelia territory, but nothing like this. It's the most strategic location in that area to move a large army across the Aramid River. The Empire will want to hold on to it at all costs, so expect tough defenses. Let's finish this quickly. You're right. The enemy's guard should be down. So let's end this quickly before they have a chance to retaliate. You're in command, Teach. Do whatever it takes to win. Well, other than sacrificing the lives of our allies for the sake of victory, try to avoid that. Let's get moving. We're counting on you, my friend. That would actually be a good vloggy thing for you to do. All the games I've ever played? Well, just your childhood games. Yeah. What made you into I mean, I gamer straight up wouldn't mind like doing a video or two on old games that like uh I played oh my god. Oh. <laughs> okay. Where are you going? All right. Here you go, Shell. Wait, no. You put them on the little controller. Thing oh, sorry. Did. Right. I took them off to give my fingers a, a break. Hey, thank you. Ivory Rain for the raid. And Hello. welcome to Late Night Fire Emblem. Grab a drink, grab some snacks, get comfy, because we're going to be here for a while. We need a ton of chatting going on. So he can get A rank with Lysithia. Let's, let's work him to be with Marianne initially. Yeah, we'll have to see. Marianne, please accept my apologies for my behavior yesterday. I'm not sure what you mean. Asking you about your family like that was pretty insensitive of me. No matter how curious I am, that's no way to treat someone. I'm sorry. Oh, no. You weren't being insensitive. I just didn't want to talk about it. I don't spend much time talking about myself. Not to people, anyway. If not people, then with who? Unpeople? <gasps> Non-people? Well, yes. I'm much more comfortable talking to anyone who isn't a person. I was actually joking, but now I'm mystified. Who is it you like to talk to? Dorte the horse. Oh. Ah, of course. Good old Dorte. And does he understand what you tell him? We understand each other. He tells me when he's sleepy, or when his stomach hurts, or if his nose itches. Sounds like a complainer, that Dorte. But let's table <laughs> this fascinating discussion for just a moment. Now that we've gotten in some small talk, I'd like to know what you're hiding. You are hiding something, right? Your lineage, perhaps? Uh, no. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If it's all just idle gossip, that's fine too. But if it's something silly like, my ancestors were cursed, therefore I'm cursed, you should know that I won't accept that nonsense. That sort of thinking is stupid, and that's all there is to it. Say your ancestors were thieves. Does that make you a thief, even if you've never stolen a thing? Of course not. But... People have burdens to bear from the moment they're born. My burdens are so big that I... I'm sorry, I can't discuss this anymore. People certainly are born with burdens. She's right about that. But Marianne, don't you know that you can choose not to carry them? Aww. Poor Marianne. He was even doing the whole cursed. My family is cursed. No, no, no. That was their being. What are you up to, Wander? Why do you look so tense? Oh, okay. Let's see, Raphael. He can have A with Lysithia. Hmm. I still want him to end up with Bernadetta. Is it alright if I have him speak with Lysithia? I mean, we already have him speaking with Hilda. Well, just because they get A doesn't mean they're going to get married. Oh. Also, we'll just overplay Bernadetta, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Okay. Where is that darn ladder? Need help with something, Lysithia? I can't find the ladder anywhere, and I needed to check out the books up on that top shelf. Want me to just grab one for you? 
no. I need to be able to dig around myself. No problem. You could sit on my shoulders instead. Up you go. Hang on a sec. That's not... Ah! I hope nobody saw that. Anyway, thank you. That was helpful. I can't believe how many fantastic books were hidden just out of reach up there. Thanks for being so patient while I rummaged. No problem at all. It was my pleasure. Hey, Raphael. You're always extra nice to me. Is it because I remind you of your sister Maya? Yeah. I can't help but think about her whenever I see you around. We lost our parents when she was still real little. So, she never had adults around to do stuff for her. That's probably why she grew up to be the kind of kid who wants to do everything on her own. That's certainly something I can relate to. I keep telling her that it's okay to rely on her big bro a little bit. Like, when there's stuff she can't do because she's too small, she just needs to ask someone bigger to do it. I told her that she could help me when I'm having trouble with stuff too. Then we would be even. Young or old, we can all help one another out. We each have our strengths and weaknesses. Receiving help and providing help in return. It sounds so simple, really. It is simple! I knew you'd get it. I do. And I hope you understand that you can come to me for help too, Raphael. I can't be the only one receiving aid. It makes me feel incompetent and like a kid. I hate that. Hmm. All right, then. You could help me clean up my room. I bet it's a disaster knowing you. I'll help you on that front, but I've got some rules on how to keep things tidy. You'll need to listen up. If you could help with the actual tidying, that would probably be better. No need to bother with rules. I don't really do so good with remembering the complicated stuff. Oh, I got an idea. It would be even better if you could just come by and tidy up from now on. Uh... <laughs> if you keep helping me, then I can help you whenever you need it. No guilt. Whenever I need it, huh? How long does that offer hold? From now on. Like, for always. I don't know what's so difficult to understand. For always sounds nice. I'm fine with that. For always. Cleaning up after each other? Wonder what's up. Eh, I'm just getting distracted. Alright. So we already had Claude talk with... Wait, oh, he can talk with... Oh, we haven't never had him talk with Annette. Yep. But he can have A rank with Lysithia or Hilda. And he can get A plus rank with Ingrid, Flame. Why is it the C plus is extended there? Oh, we already discussed the whole extra talking points. Annette. I haven't really learned much about Annette. Creep, Eddie, creep. What? Huh? Living in a land that's dark and blinded by the frigid cold, creeping through the loneliness for ages untold. In your heart, you're desperate for the sweet embrace of light, pushing through and crawling with all of your might. Here, creepy, creepy, creep, Eddie, creep. Now, creepy, creepy, creep, <laughs> Eddie, creep. I just want him to walk away. Oh, she into death God. metal? You weren't, uh, watching me, were you? I saw the whole ritual, yes. You have a gift, Annette. I could watch that all day. In fact, I just might. Claude! Ugh, can you please forget you saw that? I was just making up a silly song to pass the time while watering the plants. Sure, sure. It could be my secret serenade, if you so please. But tell me, you were born in Fargus, right? Yes, that's right. I thought so. You're really talented, you know. It's been a while since I heard a song like that. One that stirs me to my very soul. Soul stirring? My creepity creep song? I think that's a bit of an exaggeration. I never, ever exaggerate. In fact, it reminded me of rituals we have back where I grew up. We'd gather around a blazing fire and spend the whole night caught up in song and dance. Not unlike what you just demonstrated. Really, the dance I'm thinking of is exactly like the one you just did. We'd scream like beasts and then jump up and roll around. It's freeing, isn't it? 
Scream? Like a beast? That is not what I was doing. And... And what's this weird ritual you're talking about? Even better than your angelic voice were your lyrics. I can't even begin to fathom the deep meaning they contain, but maybe if we talk about it... Deep meaning? No, just... no. Oh, I get it. It's the sort of thing you have to figure out for yourself. Okay, don't tell me. Give me time. I'll work it out. Work what out? Oh, have you already watered the plants? Sorry, I'm just realizing it was supposed to be my turn this week. Ah, uh, no, it's fine. Really. Okay, see you later then. Creep, Betty, creep. He is not gonna let this go, is he? <laughs> oh, but really, the... The way that she was singing it, it was like... What was what was what were the lyrics again? Creepity creepity creep. No, like creepity 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 creep. What was it? Crawling on the ground. Clawing, crawling on the ground, all around creepy creep. I mean, I believe MythBusters found out that death metal was like good for plants because it was like high oh! energy. I forgot about those. But wait a minute. Plants can't hear. So is it feeling or is it because the people are singing it are they're letting out so much CO2 that No, I think it, it's actually just uh plants like somehow grow better. It was if I remember right, it wasn't terribly I conclusive. Like I always heard their that data wasn't the greatest, but well, the myth was always that if you sing to plants, they will be happy. And I think they will it was grow. the more energetic the music, the plants did better. Like I want to say, like really boring classical music was about the same as silence or something. I should go back and rewatch like a whole bunch of MythBusters, but time. All right. Uh, Ignatz can talk with Hilda. He doesn't really have any close relationships with anyone. <sighs> Where is it? <laughs> oh, hello there, Ignatz. Yes, hello, Hilda. What's the matter? Oh, it's just that I'm looking for a book. I can't seem to find it anywhere. I think it might be on one of the high shelves. Could you give me a hand? Ah, uh, um, I'm really sorry, but actually... Hmm? Some people got hurt while training in magic. I'm rushing to grab some medical supplies. Whoa, that sounds serious. Don't let me stop you in that case. Thanks. I'll be right back. Sorry to keep you waiting. Now, what was the book you were looking for? Is everyone okay? Yes, it turned out to just be some scrapes and bruises. Oh, is that the book? Yes. I went and grabbed a ladder. That made the book much easier to find. Ah, uh, huh. You could have just asked someone else for their help. Well, you said people were hurt, so I just figured everyone had more important things to do. Honestly, I don't love heights. It was a bit scary up there, but here we are. I managed. I see. Well, I'm sorry I couldn't help. Why are you apologizing, silly? Surely first aid is more important. I thought you might wait for me to come back, that's all. Oh, but giving first aid, that's not an easy job. I figured you'd be worn out. The last thing I want is to push you too hard. That's thoughtful of you, Hilda. Thanks for watching out for me. Oh, don't mention it. Do my cleaning again and we'll call it even. You did such a lovely job last time. The floor was practically sparkling. I swear the air even tasted cleaner. I'm glad you liked it. You're really good at giving compliments, you know that? I suppose that's why everyone's so eager to help you with things. Exactly. By heaping praise on people, they're more eager to help me in the future. Oh, but that's not what's happening here. I was really, truly impressed by your cleaning skills. I wish <laughs> I had everything figured out like you. Oh, Lysithia can talk with Hanuman. 
Phew, that about wraps it up for today's training. No thanks to a certain distraction. Professor Hanneman, I know you're there. It's extremely unsettling the way you're always staring like that. Oh, my apologies, child. I was trying to remain inconspicuous, not wanting to interrupt. Your half-hearted attempt to hide your weird staring only makes it weirder. Well, I must apologize. In the future, I shall do my staring out in the open. That might ease the weirdness, but it will continue to be extremely unsettling. I have no desire to disturb nor to disquiet you. But you are a most exquisite subject for my crest research. And you understand that the foundation of all research is observation. I understand well enough. And I'll do my best to ignore it. But in return... In return, I will keep your secret. I have not spoken a word of your twin crests, not even to the church. If they knew I was withholding such valuable information, I might be branded a traitor. But such matters are trivial compared to the future of Crestology. Shh! Don't talk so loudly about it out here in the open! Pardon my excitement. I simply cannot let the opportunity to study such a miraculous subject go to waste. These awful crests may seem miraculous to you, but for me, they fall under the category of curse. I hope... One day, you will share more about your tragic origins, whenever you have the time to recount it. Your tale may contain valuable information. You are utterly lacking in empathy, you know that? Even if you spent your entire life observing me, you'd never understand my feelings and all I've been through. Now, if you'll excuse me. Ah, I fear I may have made a misstep. I have no desire to trouble her, yet my research... Ah, of course he would want to observe her double crests. That doesn't sound right. So apparently her, like, A rank and epilogue are actually really good together, by the way. What do you mean? Um... Like, H Hanneman figures out how to remove crests. I knew they were going to do something like that. Which uh, might actually be something to pursue. Oh, but then we lose Hanneman with... Manuela. What do you mean you lose it? Because uh, you can only get one epilogue per character. Like, combo. Oh, really? Yeah, so you can't have, like, Hanneman just uh, man whoring it out with, like, several ladies. Well, no, 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 but it's not even... He isn't going to get with Lysithia. He's just going to tell her about no. the No, it's, the it's aromantic. Right, right. That's what I was getting at. So why couldn't he marry Manuela or someone and then tell Lysithia because about her Because they past? only get one paired epilogue. Or a solo epilogue. They should have given everyone an epilogue with anyone who ever got to A rank. Because that would take forever. And this doesn't? Also, some might compete. But yes, you're also right. Okay, and she can talk with Hanneman. Everyone talks to Hanneman. I should head back. Finished with your training, Miss Marianne? Oh, but Professor Hanneman, yes, I've just finished training for the day. You have merely completed the exercises assigned to you, yes? Nothing more? Or am I wrong? Yes. I'm sorry, I should have done more. No, no, please. You've done as you were asked. Quite solid work, child. I simply wish to ask a question. You possess a crest, do you not? I... <sighs> when you entered the officer's academy, your father submitted a request to the monastery, as well as a significant donation. Your father asked that your crest not be confirmed under any circumstances. At first, I thought he did not want the world to know that his daughter bore no crest. In your father's position as a newly minted noble, it would be most advantageous for his daughter to possess a crest, you see. However, I am now certain I was wrong. I believe you do, in fact, possess a crest of some sort. How did he find out? 
I have been called the father of Crestology, which is a bit of an ostentatious title, I admit. However, a brief period of observation allows me to hazard a usually accurate guess as to whether a body houses a crest or not. With the knowledge of your father's actions and my own observations, I come to you with a warning. As a crest bearer, you are guaranteed to have certain talents. It is prudent to study your crest diligently to ensure your safe mastery of these talents, whatever they may prove to be. No, no, I have no talents. Oh yes, you do. No matter how hard you may try to hide it, my sight is keener than that. And what I see, others will eventually notice as well. Those who hold power must wield it in the service of their fellow man, Miss Marianne. I believe that is true, whether you are peasant or noble. And doubly true, I would say, for those with crests. Or do you think I'm wrong? I... Uh... On principle alone, it is a waste to allow a rare talent to remain dormant. I would like very much to advise you to aid your understanding of your crest. Will you accept my offer? N no, I refuse. That is regrettable. A veritable tragedy, Miss Marianne. We already defeated the monster and everything. I wish that... I really wish that they took it into account. You might as well A-rank people, Shell. Okay, I will. But I'll do that at the end. Hilda, lovely as ever. I swear, when you're around, the sun shines brighter and everything sparkles. Sylvain, you're looking superb as always. Thank you. Are you going out today? If you do, then be careful. I'd hate to think you might hurt your foot again. My foot? Oh, yes! You mean that time you helped me with the books? <laughs> no need to worry. The foot's fine now. Even better than it was before. I noticed, you know, since I'm always looking at cute girls, and you are one of the cuter ones. Your foot was better during the battle. You were running all over, just a regular warrior princess. And less than a day after such a terrible injury. My friends were depending on me, so I just had to fight through the pain. Hilda, please don't <laughs> lie to me. I knew your foot wasn't really hurt, but I returned your books anyway. Take it from a guy who does his fair share of pretending to be someone he's not. And I say this as a friend, you are a terrible liar. And those books you left in your room for so long? Teachers and classmates needed those. So stop lying, and maybe stop being quite as selfish too. <laughs> You saw right through me. Honestly, I'd completely forgotten that I still had those books. I really was going to return them. Did the librarian say anything to you? Oh yeah. I got an earful of yelling and accusations meant for you. Huh? Didn't you just say it was my fault? Nah, I figured the librarian would feel better if they just let loose. No reason to make them wait for you. I'm so sorry. You got a tongue lashing that should have been directed at me. Tell you what, all will be forgiven if you promise three things. Stop lying, take responsibility, and fall madly in love with me. Aw, Sylvain, I do love you, you know? I just wouldn't want you for a husband. What? Why not? Well, not to offend you, but... I can't help but feel that your niceness is somehow shallow. My brother Yours would in. probably cut you into pieces the moment he saw your face. Your brother sounds uh, terrifying, actually. We're losing the thread a bit here. Evidently, you can see through my act. So I'll just be straightforward about taking advantage of you. <laughs> well, I'll take what I can get. Just don't go causing trouble for guys who aren't me. It's a deal. Goodbye for now, Sylvain. And forever. Because their relationship can only go up to be. I mean, that was a nice finality, though. Yeah. You know? Mm hmm. Oh, Time to maybe learn about medieval Ferdinand. Fabio here. Yeah, we've never heard anything of Ferdinand. We had a, two solo conversations with it him, and I have no ends. idea what they were. Oh, Ferdinand.
Ferdinand? Hilda, do you need something? I just have a tiny favor to ask. I apologize, but I must graciously decline. You didn't even let me say what it was. I can proffer a guess. Instead of relying on others, why not try doing something on your own? Nobles should not be lazy or idle. We should accomplish our goals through earnest effort. Easy for you to say. You're the very model of a diligent noble. Always contemplating the noblest course of action, never stopping to take a break. Your chore today was repairing the weapons, right? There are so many weapons here, and yet you're already done. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> it was nothing. Anyone could have done the same. I don't think so. I certainly couldn't. I do not believe that to be true. Look at me. I'm supposed to be organizing these library supplies, but I have no idea where to start. What could be difficult about such a task? You simply line them up and count them. There are too many. Well, maybe it doesn't seem difficult to you, but that's just because you're so clever. Granted, there might be some creative approaches to completing the task. Oh? Please, enlighten me. Hmm, I can point you in the right direction. But to start, divide them up by size. Right, right. I'm with you so far. And then what? Now, put similar items together. That makes it easier to get a handle on the numbers. I see. Then what? Now that you have arranged everything, you can begin counting. See how easy it is? Wow! You did that in no time! You really saved my neck there. Thanks, Ferdinand. Bye! What? <laughs> it was nothing. I... Oh. I suppose I ended up doing her work after all. Uh, funny. I mean, he seems like a good guy. Yeah, he does. He's just boring? I'm sure we'll learn more about him as we go along. Why are you going up and down? Just talk to I, I was wanting to look at all the other characters. It's mostly ladies. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Just look at this place. It's so beautiful, I believe I should take a nap and enjoy it properly. Linhart, lost in thought, I see. Unacceptable. Are you not aware that a noble's duty is to be ever vigilant? Rest increases alertness. Is there something I can do for you, Ferdinand? Well, I was just passing by, and I thought I could give you a little advice. You always seem to be napping. Why not spend your free time doing something productive? Easier said than done, Ferdinand. I'm afraid I suffer from a constitution that tires easily. Hmm. <laughs> Some training will remedy that. Let us work on that today. I will train you myself. Arise, Linhart! The righteous path of the noble lies before you. You're always giving it your all, aren't you? Yes, I am. Is there something wrong with that? Of course not. In fact, I rather enjoy your demeanor. You go all out even when others wish you wouldn't. You work hard, inspire the admiration of others, and your dignity as a noble is beyond reproach. I consider it my mission to serve as a guide and a model for other members of the nobility. As capable as you are striking, next to you, I am a mere infant. Oh, you are far too kind. Although I do work hard each day to achieve all of which you speak. You've mastered all the important noble skills. You drink tea, talk about how great you are, ride horses. Indeed, I went for a ride earlier today. Is that so? You'll have to tell me about it sometime when I'm not walking away. <laughs> Where are you going? Oh, I must get some sleep, being the infant that I am. Farewell for now, Ferdinand. Oh, noble among nobles. Noble among nobles? Seems a bit much. Did he say get some sleep? Hey, wait! Wow. Linhart really sassed him there. Yeah. Linhart is one of the smarter characters. And he can kind of be savage. Mm -hmm. 
Boy, we're spending half the night listening to these. Yeah, I mean, you're attempting to rank up all the relationships. It's apparently easier than I thought it was going to be. Perfect. Oh, hey, Bernadetta. What's going on? Enemy! Enemy's here! We're under attack! Help! Someone! Anyone! Help? I'm the one who came here for help. I guess I'll just take care of it myself. I can't believe I got hurt trying to break up someone else's fight. It's ridiculous. All I do is step in to calm them down, and the next thing you know, they're both at my throat. Hey, you ever been in a fight? Fight? You're challenging me to a duel? No, 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 I can't! I've never fought anyone in all my life! I surrender! You win! Uh, you have murdered right. so many people, Bernadetta. Shut up. <laughs> Not to be rude, but do you ever think that maybe your attitude makes you a little unapproachable? You should try stepping outside and socializing. I'm sure you'd make friends in no time if you didn't waste it all in here. Outside? In no time? Oh, sure, yeah. Why didn't I think of that? Well, maybe it's just not as easy for me as it is for you. Did that ever cross your mind? Why wouldn't it be? Making friends is easy. This one time, I even made friends with someone I'd just been in a fight with. I think it was the gorgeous view that did it. <laughs> uh, we really shared a moment. Come on, let's go check it out. Uh, uh, hold on! What are you doing? Uh, please don't touch me! Ah, put me down! Put me down! Calm down. I'm just gonna carry you out of here. Easy does it. Caspar, that's are. abduction. See? That wasn't so bad, now was it? And what about this view? Gorgeous, right? So this is what death is like. Didn't expect it to be so sudden. Come and claim me, sweet death. But first, let this evening sun wash clean my imperfect soul. Hey, now don't go dying on me, <laughs> Bernadetta. It's just the sun. <laughs> no? What? Where am I? Oh, it's pretty. Such a lovely view. See, she does have two personalities. There's... <laughs> one and the one forgets what the other one is witness. No, you're right. When it, she's in full on like panic mode, she's just bonkers. Oh god, there's so many. Uh. <sighs> I've looked everywhere. I guess Sylvain must still have it. Huh? When did this book get here? Wait. This is mine, and there's something sticking out of it. A letter? Dear author, I read your manuscript quite by accident and duly apologize. However, I also write today to inform you that I enjoyed your story tremendously. I laughed and cried as the heroine overcame her many obstacles, growing stronger with each step. Your literary style presents a unique perspective, I could sense you watching over the protagonist. <laughs> wow, so many compliments, and so much attention to detail. A girl's failures are as compelling as her triumphs, since authors are told to write what they know. I believe your tale would not have been so convincing were it not for your own experiences. Um, what? My own experiences? That's a weird way to give praise. Who wrote this anyway? Who would read my story so carefully and then write this long letter to tell me about it? Whoever it is, they must be wonderful. Someone like my dear old uncle. I do hope my letter inspires you to keep writing. Looking forward to the next chapter. Your devoted fan, Sylvain. What? Sylvain? It can't be! Hey, you Bernadetta. Did you read my letter? How long have you been standing there? I'm sorry, but I fell head over heels for your story. It's so good, and I just had to tell you about it. So, what do you say? Will you write more? Why don't we talk literature over some tea? Oh, I see your plan now. You're out to humiliate me. Very clever, but I'm not falling for it. Ah. Uh... I think one of the reasons why I do like Sylvain is he's not one note. 
with all these girls? Like, with Bernadetta, I, did he even hit on her ever? No. I think he's just really. hitting on her book. He just came across the book. Yeah. yeah. Like, Hilda is very one note. She's always trying to get other people to do her work for her. But, like, Sylvain freaking is just nice to people. Creepy at first, and then actually I mean, and nice. With some, he does have the... I, I think with Hilda, he had admitted that as someone who spends all of my time lying, I should know when someone else is. Yeah. So... No, it's true. He's I don't know. That. I just like a number of these because he's so far been actually pretty positive with Bernadetta. I don't know about Flayne. This will be funny. Yes. Sylvain. Hi. Why do you look so down? But hey, if you're talking to me of your own accord, can I assume you've figured out I'm not a monster? I wanted to apologize about my treatment of you earlier, Sylvain. I am not normally one to put stock in such rumors. Nothing to be upset about. I mean, I've kind of earned that reputation. I've just... I've got this sickness. When I see a pretty girl, I can't stop myself from flirting with her. Like you, for instance. Oh, I am so sorry to hear of your illness. Perhaps my magic will help <laughs> heal you. Huh? No, I didn't mean it like that. No? Are you not ill, then? You know what? Let's just... Let's move on. Can I take this to mean everything is good between us? Of course. Sylvain, I look forward to getting to know you without the falsity of rumors. Great. Would you like to celebrate our new friendship by joining me for a meal? You would treat me to a feast? <laughs> that is very kind of you. A chance to spend time with a sweet girl like yourself? It's a pleasure. Your voice like birdsong. Your eyes clear as diamonds. But above all, I'm drawn to your kind and loving heart. I am a captive to your charms, Flame. I hear that very frequently. Thank you. Yeah, I... Uh, I guess a girl as cute as you would get a lot of compliments. Anyway, what type of meal were you considering, Sylvain? I would love some seafood, followed by a delicious cake! Oh, I am absolutely famished, as I often am. Shall we be on our way? <laughs> she's a tough one. Sheltered girls like her usually fall for that kind of stuff. But she's much too savvy. Even for a smooth talker like myself. I'm really she disappointed Seth didn't just show up and go like, Wait, what? Oh, Seth? <laughs> <laughs> like, how oh, great. I, I really wish for some of Flayne's cutscenes, you would see like Seth creeping in the background, like peeking out from a bookshelf in the water below, uh, you know, just like standing directly behind Sylvain, or no, directly behind Flayne, just glaring angrily. Like, it'd be so magic. Oh, well. Professor Manuela, it's been far too long since we've had a proper chat. Let's fix that right now. Too true, Dorothea. We hardly have a moment to spare here. But it's so nice to see you flourishing. It certainly brings back memories. You know, somehow you've gotten even prettier. The years have been kind to you. <laughs> That's something like a rose telling a daisy it's pretty, but I appreciate the compliment all the same. <laughs> oh, honey, if that's the case, I hope you'll work hard to never become a rose like me. Too many thorns. Oh, stop it. You've accomplished a great deal. You should be proud. That's a very nice sentiment, and I appreciate it. Thank you. So, I've been very curious. How did you end up enrolled at the Academy, anyway? I know you didn't have any family connections. How'd you do it? Well, it did require pulling some noble strings. But learning everything to pass the entrance exams? That was all me, and very hard. Especially while I was still singing for the opera. But I wanted the Academy more than anything else. Well, bravo, and well done. You've always had to find your own way in life, haven't you? 
I so wish you could rely on people more often. Still, though, you haven't said why you worked so hard to get into Garrig Mach to begin with. Isn't it obvious? Because you were here. When you retired, it broke my heart. But it also woke me up. Seeing someone like you, who shined so brightly on the stage, give it all up and start a brand new life. It got me thinking about my own future, and what I wanted it to look like. As ever, I followed your lead. Oh, oh my. I, oh, I don't know what to say. I had also heard that the heirs to the Alliance, Empire, and the Kingdom were all enrolling as well. With such an exceptional crop of potential spouses, <laughs> how could I go anywhere else? And have you gotten what you were after? Your dreams, a future, and a good partner? I'm sure I'll find my somebody someday, but I haven't found them yet. Ah, it's so nice to spend time with you again, Manuela. It's been too long. Huh. So they've been acquainted with each other before because of the opera business. Well, yeah, she was the she was the lead singer at the same opera group. Mm-hmm. Is it just them? Yeah. Today's dinner is steak and then a cake that's yummy yum. Now it's time to fill my tummy tummy tum. Oh, this mountain of sweets and treats that I long to eat. Oh, stacks of steaks and cakes and crumbs and yums. <laughs> I hope I'm not interrupting. Felix, you weren't listening, were you? I heard enough to know that you're hungry. No, I mean, well, yes. At least tell me you didn't see the dance. You have nice footwork. Get something to eat. I can take over watering the plants. <laughs> Long silence. You're evil, Felix! And you're shouting. You can't just spy on people while they're singing without even saying anything! It's not right! I actually did call out that I was coming in. It's not my fault you didn't hear. Well, you need to speak louder then! Ugh, this is so embarrassing. And of course I was singing some silly food song I made up. I should have been singing about bears or swamp beasties. I didn't realize there were songs about bears and swamp beasties. That food song seemed to be close to your heart. Your stomach isn't far from your heart after all. Oh, you are the worst! Huh. What was that about? I better water these plants. Wouldn't want them to get thirsty, or they might start singing too. I would have to say a good third of these conversations are someone is going about their business, another person arrives and barges in on them. They get embarrassed or or indignant and then run off. Yeah. Are we almost done? Oh we oh we still have more. Adam and Wayla. Adam and no. They both have man in the name. Oh. Manuela, isn't it a bit rude to sigh at someone the moment you see them enter the room? Panaman, isn't it a bit rude to tell others how to behave? Besides, I could be sighing about any number of things more interesting than you. Goodness, you're unusually irritable today. Don't you imagine your attitude a bit excessive? You snap at every little thing, your ill mood on display for one and all. It saddens me to see such behavior from one who should be setting a good example for the younger generation. Well, listen to the noble lecturing a lowly commoner to be on her best behavior. Oh, wait, I meant to say the former noble. I fail to understand how my birth is relevant to the topic at hand. I was merely trying to say that as a fellow adult... You're not done lecturing yet? Leave me alone and go pester someone else. Maybe leave everyone alone and go focus on your precious crest research. Huh. I don't know what to say to you, Manuel. I was only speaking out of honest concern. Oh, 
Was that a sigh I heard? Isn't it a bit rude to sigh at someone just because? Don't be so childish. You are so sensitive to ill will from others, yet you let your own emotions run wild. Why is it that you cannot keep a handle on yourself? Keep a handle on? Well, I've never. What makes you think you're so much better? Just because you keep your emotions bottled up behind your stupid stony face, well, it doesn't mean everyone else has to do the same. Stop telling everyone how to behave, Hanneman. It will make you and the rest of us much happier. I will not stand for this insolence. It is high time someone taught you. Go on. If you think you can change me, I'd like to see you try. <sighs> Thought so. You wouldn't dare. Absolutely insufferable. <laughs> wow. That was getting quite heated. Yeah, this rate, I think it's just Claude and Lysithia and Hilda. So, do we just talk with them both? Yeah. Strategically speaking, if I poised an archer to lie in wait here, and then lured the enemy in over here... Lysithia, are you up late studying again? I am, but I don't see how it's any of your business. Look, you don't need to work yourself so hard. You're already as skilled as they come. There aren't many people out there who can match you. Everyone knows that. I apologize for my sharpness. I just feel pressured. Why would you, of all people, feel pressured? I place a lot of personal pressure on myself. I need to become as strong as possible to put my parents at ease. When I met with Count Ordelia before, he said you were his pride and joy. But he also said his only concern was that you might be pushing yourself too hard. If you really want to make your parents happy, surely you should start by taking care of yourself. That's true. Then it's settled. Get some rest. Save your energy for tomorrow's battle. You really are very mature, Claude, despite the impression you give off. And I clearly have plenty of growing to do. I probably don't have much room to come down on you for harping on me. Oh, really? Does that mean you won't get mad if I treat you like a child from now on? That is absolutely not what I said. Just after you finally earned a small degree of respect from me, too. Hey, just think about it for a second. You're the only one in the world I treat like this. That means you're a pretty special person to me. You think I'm special? Take it however you like. Or maybe the thought is too much for a kiddo like you. Ah, how dare you! Yeah, don't do anything you might regret. I don't want to be turned to dust. I'm feeling generous. So I'll let you off easy this one time. <laughs> well, that's good of you. All joking aside, go get yourself some shut-eye, okay? After all, if you don't hurry up, the boogeyman might come out and eat you. All right, buddy, you asked for it. Eh. Huh? I was just kind of Claude being mean to her. Like, oh. positive, but also kind of mean. I feel like I'm drowning in responsibilities. Claude, take my mind off it all. Regale me with another of your weird childhood stories. Okay, then. How about an old story from a foreign land that my dad told me when I was a kid? Once upon a time, there was a white camel that got separated from his herd. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm so happy for that white camel. I really thought he was going to die. I want to hear the story. story. really worth bawling your eyes out over? It was wonderful. Don't you know how moving that story is? You know, I never thought much of it until today. But seeing you bawling like that, I do appreciate it a little more now. <laughs> What's that mean? Well, you're always fake crying, aren't you? Getting all misty-eyed to make people think you're a delicate flower. 
What? You're awful. I only cry when I'm sad. Claim what you like, but I can spot real tears from fake tears any day of the week. Fess up. <laughs> if you understand me so well, maybe it's because you're no different. How's that? When you smile or laugh, it's not sincere. I can tell. I've only seen you genuinely smile a handful of times. Like when you're talking to the professor. Well, good one, Hilda. You hit me right in the gut. I guess you're right. I'm not so different from you in that way. But how did you come to realize that? Have you been watching me that closely? I'm afraid so. My eyes seem to wander toward you of their own accord. <laughs> Hold on. Forget I said that. I didn't say that. Nope, no can do. Forgetting isn't something this crafty brain of mine is capable of. Besides, my eyes have a tendency to wander in your direction, too. How else do you think I found out about your fake crying? Huh? What are you getting at? Say, Hilda, once everything's settled down, do you want to come meet my parents? I mean, don't get the wrong idea, you just seem interested in my family. Besides, you've opened up to me quite a bit, but I still haven't let you in on my own secrets. If you meet my parents, I think you'll understand, though it might come as a bit of a surprise. Your family? I'd be lying if I said I wasn't curious. Well then, if neither of us changes our minds before the opportunity presents itself, let's agree to go visit my home together. Although, ah. if it's a long journey, my brother might not be too happy. True, that might be a tough nut to crack. As tough as Fodlan's locket. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose their families would be at opposite sides of that conflict at Fogland's locket. But he was gonna invite her to visit the folks. And they were talking about wandering eyes. Mm. Well, it is time. I mean, that was cute. Still gotta figure out who to pair them with. But that's gonna. I be don't really think later. Lysithia was a good no pair for Claude. Definitely not. Hilda more so. Okay. But who else can he even romance? Uh, let's see. If we check supports. Uh, let's see. So the answer is Marianne, Leone, Petra, Annette, Ingrid, Flane, and Shamir. I mean, he and Petra were fine too. Yeah. With so the whole tree I think situation. Petra was one of the cuter ones. I've totally blanked on his conversations with Ingrid. I don't even remember the conversations with Ingrid. Didn't we do them, like, today? Well, oh, wasn't it just... Uh, there had to be some kind of tie with Daphne talking about his aunt or something, or... What? Maybe he was complimenting her on how did she... we... Oh, he seems so composed. Did... We must have done that today. Did... No, 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 I don't... I, I want to say we did that today because I never use Ingrid. No, we, she, no. We've never had a conversation with her that's a support conversation. And definitely not today, unless he randomly got points with her. It was Ingrid chastising Claude for not being proper. That was a long time ago, though. Was it? God. Um. Okay, well, Ingrid's out of the <laughs> running. We'll have to see the other conversations, but... Interesting. Okay, speaking of... Whoops. Ah, he fails nope. again! Lorenz, you shit. <laughs> I mean, it's like a 40%. It's not a high chance. Wonder. What? I could have... I could verbally ber berate Lorenz for being awful. We haven't seen any support conversations with Lorenz and anyone for a while. Well, that's, that's because, because I stopped him. using him and and uh, Ignatz more or less as soon as I started recruiting other people and realizing that other people were downright amazing. Mm -hmm. What time is it now? Uh, it's one. We can we can do the plot mission and then bed. Okay, that sounds fine with me. Let's see. So, 
the other person, not the net, Ingrid, patented. Hail Mary? Nope. Didn't seem happy about that. Hey, Lorenz is probably the best Dark Knight in the game. Yeah, his stats seemed evenly distributed. The problem is, uh, his skills are not. In the slightest. I still wish I could do private training sessions during Free Explore, because that would help a lot. Him and Sylvain both, really. I could see Felix being a pretty good Dark Knight. Assuming you, like, pushed him in that direction. Anybody else? Tandeman can't become a Dark Knight yet. We should probably work on. Sedith is the last one. I apologize for this. It's just if we can get it. Hey! Yeah, you made it. I passed. I passed. Okay. Let's see. So, I guess we could level up Annette. Because there's no other classes for her. Ingrid, I still want to work on other stuff. Ash is probably fine as he is. Felix is fine. I don't know about her. Dorothy is fine. Bernadetta is fine. Caspar is eh. Lindhart is probably fine. I can work on Ferdinand. But I guess none of these things matter right now. Because we got story stuff to do. But we can bring Sedith finally. Well, this is going to be the Great Battle of Mirden. Yeah. After fending off the Empire, your forces decide it's time to advance. But first, you must capture the Great Bridge of Mirden, a strategic crossing point over the Aramid River, which borders the Alliance and the Empire. Good God, we play this game for five hours a night, and we still got five, ch five chapters left after this one. Or six. 17, Sight 18, 19, 19 the 20, 21, capital. 22. The Alliance yeah, Army chooses to march through the territory of House Gloucester, supporters of the Empire. Under the command of Nardell, the retainer of House Regan, the defensive forces of Houses Regan and Daphnel draw out the Gloucester troops. Thus, the Alliance Army can continue its march toward the Great Bridge of Murden and cross the Aramid River, which separates the Alliance and the Empire. So that was the first time we got to see Nardell. Yeah. Nardell had the same color hair as... Yeah. Probably... I wouldn't be surprised if it isn't his, like, uncle. Mm-hmm. On his father's side. Like, I hope we get that... Wait, we might even get that revelation sooner than later. Possibly. Because, uh... Claude actually has another, uh, special class. Ooh. The rose-colored river. Okay, so units first and foremost. Raphael. Let's sort some of these things. Raphael gets Bernadetta. Hanneman is cool, but we should probably save... I'll think about what I want to do with Hanneman. Uh, Mercedes is good. Marianne, get out of here. We like Sylvain. He's interesting. So we have to bring Flane along. Who can Sylvain speak with? Uh, let's see. Support conversations with Sylvain. It's interesting how how much, I don't know, I've attached onto him. So Felix. So Felix, Dorothea. But that, yeah, Felix was the childhood friend. Mercedes. Mercedes, Ingrid. Ingrid was another childhood friend. Yeah, Ingrid, Annette. I would probably... Ooh, I'd probably pair him with... Dorothea well, I'd say I'd pair him with Dorothea. Or but Felix. I'd use Dorothea and Felix. So, I guess the next answer would be Mercedes or Annette. Yeah. Let's do... Oh, wait. Do we have Mercedes in the... Yeah. Let's... 
I actually have too many casters, which surprises me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Where's Mercedes? There she is. Okay. And... We could give somebody to... No, probably not X. Who else can Hilda friend? Hilda... Oh. Oh, Caspar. Or Ferdinand. Yeah, I don't know if she's... With, I, do I remember? Oh, what was her? We recently had our support conversation with Caspar. I kind of forgot it. It didn't seem terribly mention, uh, notable. Mm hmm. Okay. So we have one all rounder, one healer, one archer, one wall, another mage, two more melee people. Rider. So who do we want to bring along? I guess first first and foremost, let's check the map. Do we have any chests? I doubt it. This is a town. Oh, no, there's, there's a chest. There's a chest and a ballista. Chest and a ballista. That's uh, actually a good sign. Oh. Oh, Ladislava. Right. One of the other major generals. Yeah, so I see two chests. So you're going to want to bring... Ash. Ash. Okay. Probably. I get the feeling they're probably going to be Imperial Reinforcements. This is a really light mm -hmm. crew that they're chucking at me. Okay, so units. Uh, let's grab Ash. Let's see. Probably Leone. Because she is fast. And then were you going to bring Dorothea? I was thinking... Oh, uh, hmm. How many actual healers do I have? Flane and to a lesser degree Lysithia. Uh yeah, Dorothea might not be a bad idea. I'd like to bring Sedith along. But this should be good. Okay, and map. Right. Where's that first chest? So we're gonna put Ash on the right. I think I might uh, get him a cavalry class, maybe. Like, switch him to paladin. Because he's a decent archer, and he can still do archery. Um, but it might not be a bad idea to stick him on a horse no matter what. Just for speed. Or go, like, completely nuts and just make him into a, uh, a flyer. That'd take a while, though. Oh, I forgot. Eh, whatever. 